it can make it stuck. Brilliant, thanks so much. Okay, so um, welcome everyone to the fifth webinar in the series of, of the ePrime e -prime webinars. I'm Caroline Champney and I'm the publisher of the new open access journal ePrime here at Elsevier. Uh, today, um, I and Karen Esch Kant, who's one of our early career editorial board members, we're excited to welcome you to the webinar series. So uh, Elsevier's ePrime was launched at the end of 2021. It's a new open access fast turnaround journal in electrical engineering, electronics and energy launched to help, the, help, to help increase the impact of your research across disciplines. And today our webinar speaker is Professor Yong Heng Yang from Zhejiang University in Hangzhou in China. Um, and we're going to present the power, power, power electronics technology for grid, grid connected wind and solar power PV systems. But before I go ahead and um, introduce um, Professor Yang, I just wanted to mention a couple of housekeeping points. So everyone will be muted throughout the webinar. And uh, we ask you to go ahead and ask your questions in the chat as we go through, as, as Professor Yang goes through, through the the presentation um, and, and, and wanted to uh, mention that at the end, if you did want to um, ask a question, then just raise your hand and we'll, we'll unmute you. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and introduce um, uh, Professor Yong Heng Yang. So um, Professor Yang received a PhD degree from the Department of Energy Technology at Aalborg University um, in Denmark in 2014. And he joined Zhenjiang University as a ZJU 100 professor in December 2020. Prior to that, he was a professor, at, uh, uh, sorry, an associate professor at Aalborg University. So Professor Yang's uh, research is focused on the control and grid integration of solar photovoltaic power conversion and systems and, and the reliability of power electronic systems. He was the recipient of the 2021 IEEE Richard M. Bass Outstanding Young Power Electronics Engineer Award, and also the 2022 I I IEEJ, the ICO Takahashi Power Electronics Award. Professor Yang was named on the list of highly, highly cited um, Chinese researchers by Elsevier in 2022, and he now serves as a vice chair of the IEEE Power Electronics Society Technical Committee on S Sustainable Energy Systems. He was also the chair of the Denmark section of the same. Um, Professor Yang serves as a senior editor for Elsevier's journal for, for ePrime, and he's associate ed editor also for several IEEE transactions journals and journals. So I'd like to hand over to you now, Professor Yang, and say a special thank you for joining us at this hour, because it's late for you there in China. So please go ahead and welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline, for the very kind introduction. And uh, good evening, uh, good morning, or good uh, afternoon, depends on uh, where you are based uh, now. <laughs> Uh, my name is Yung Hen Yang, as uh, introduced by Caroline, and uh, I'm now working at Zhejiang University. And today I'm uh, very glad and honored to present some of our uh, studies related to power electronics and control technologies for renewable power generations. Uh, about the presentation, and the first I will walk through uh, with you all uh, what is the current status of renewable power development, and then uh, we will focus on the development of power electronics uh, with a brief history review of uh, power electronics. Then uh, our focus will be put on the uh, power electronics converters of all wind and uh, uh, solar photovoltaic uh, uh, systems because uh, those are the two major renewable energy uh, power generation across the globe. Then uh, I will uh, present the control techniques uh, most specifically uh, related to the uh, some some selected uh, selective control technologies for power converters because uh, for different applications the control uh, targets the control objectives are. Uh, different. So we selected some uh, typical control uh, applications in power electronics based wind and the PV systems. Then at the end, uh, 
I'm going to summarize uh, today's presentations. And uh, of course, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will be uh, happy to answer and discuss with you. So as we all know, uh, the global energy consumption is uh, still uh, increasing at a fast pace. Uh, as you can see on the right uh, side of this, uh, this uh, slide, the figure so, so compares the global direct uh, primary energy consumption in the past two decades, two uh, uh, centuries. As you can see, uh, around the 18th centuries, uh, the primary energy resources is uh, traditional biomass. But by the end of uh, uh, 2019, uh, we can see the traditional biomass has been significantly reduced in the past two uh, centuries. And uh, those traditional uh, energy resources are replaced by uh, uh, renewables as well as other uh, advanced technologies, for example, nuclear or, or other, other uh, power generation technologies. We see that in the past, it is a few fossil uh, dominant uh, energy consumption uh, uh, structure, but today it is more renewable based and renewable is still increasing uh, because uh, uh, seeing from the global perspective, we see that uh, the global uh, nations, uh, all the nations are, are trying to uh, bring the, the, the temperature increase down the, the, the two degrees C or 1.5 degrees C issues uh, uh, on, the, on the, uh, the Paris uh, agreement. But in China, the government is also uh, use the carbon uh, emissions uh, from uh, power generation systems. We have this carbon neutrality uh, uh, strategy across the, the nation. So seen from the global perspective and also the national pers uh, perspective, uh, we will see more uh, energy consumption that is uh, uh, met by uh, renewable power generation. So when we look at the uh, development of global renewable energy, we see that uh, there is a, a significant increase in the past two decades. Uh, for example, uh, for the major renewable energy re installations in the past two, two decades, of course, the hydropower is the number one uh, renewable energy, and then followed by wind and uh, 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 solar energy. And among those major uh, renewable energy sources, there are also uh, bioenergy resource, geothermal resource, and the marine energy resources across the globe. But by the end of 2020, actually, the submission of, uh, uh, of wind and solar has exceeds the total uh, installation of uh, hydropower. And we will see the uh, increase of uh, wind and solar and uh, furthermore in the near future because uh, hydropower is uh, uh, geographical dependent. Uh, you have to install in, in a, a specific areas or regions to get this power. Uh, compared to wind and solar, this is, those are uh, less uh, geographical uh, de dependent. And then uh, furthermore, when we look at the uh, renewable and the non-renewable annual additions in the past two, two, decades, uh, two decades, we also see that the, the non-renewables in installations has been significantly reduced. And instead, the renewables installations has been significantly increased. And by the end of 2021, the, the annual installation of renewables uh, is four times of that uh, of the uh, non-renewables. And uh, we will still see uh, this uh, big gap between the renewables and the non-renewables. And uh, that is then uh, in the future, more renewables will be installed in the, in the grid and the more uh, non-renewable power generation will be phased out to, to tackle the environmental uh, crisis. Yeah, and uh, when we look at the power generation from renewables, uh, what is the key? The key actually is the power electronics. Power electronics is the key component in the renewable power generations. Uh, for example, from uh, wind, from uh, uh, solar, from nuclear, and even from hydro. And uh, there are quite a lot of power electronics converters used in such applications. Uh, here in this uh, slide, uh, we just uh, briefly show so how renewables and other power generation systems uh, are connected to the uh, power grid and uh, through the, the power electronics converters. 
And the power electronics today are seen in every aspect of the energy generation, uh, transmission, distribution, conversion, and the utilizations. And we will soon see uh, a power grid that is highly penetrated with uh, uh, power electronics. And uh, in that case, we have quite a lot of challenging issues to, uh, to, 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 to face with and uh, to, to address in order to, uh, to, to secure the power supplies to have a reliable and a stable power system. And uh, in terms of uh, the uh, installation of uh, our wind and solar PV, this has been also um, increasing uh, exponentially in the past two decades, especially for our PV systems. Actually, this has been increased uh, in the past uh, 10 years uh, significantly compared to the uh, wind uh, increase. The wind power that is gradually increased, but for uh, PV that has an extensive increase in the past 10 years. And uh, some, some numbers, uh, by 2021, approximately the total global installed wind is around uh, 800 gigawatts and the full solar, that's around uh, 850 uh, gigawatts. And uh, in the single year of uh, 2021, uh, wind and PV has been installed almost about 100 gigawatts uh, uh, respectively. And as I mentioned in previous slide, since 2020, wind and PV total capacity has uh, exceeded the total capacity of hydropower. We will see uh, more uh, difference. Uh, I mean, more PV and wind uh, compared to hydro in the near future. And another uh, interesting point is the unit capacity is getting higher, especially for wind turbines. Uh, today on the market, there, there are wind turbines and a single wind turbine, the total capacity is around uh, uh, 15 megawatts. That's significantly huge wind turbine compared to the uh, wind turbines in uh, the past two uh, decades. So this is a significant increasing. And, uh, for example, uh, as I mentioned, for wind power systems, uh, and because of the use of uh, more power electronics, the, the power uh, processing capability is increasing, then we, we see um, more uh, larger, much larger uh, uh, wind turbines. And this uh, basically shows how the power electronics uh, has been used in wind power generations uh, along with its history and in uh, around the uh, 40 years, 40 to 55, 50 years ago, uh, power electronics were, were barely used in wind turbines and uh, gradually uh, they were partially used as, uh, for example, uh, uh, soft starters in wind turbine systems. And to today, uh, today's wind turbines, that's full uh, scale power converters because uh, they can, they enable the wind turbine generator systems to be more active to process more uh, power with uh, high efficiency and uh, high uh, reliability. And uh, with more uh, power electronics in the, in the systems, uh, we will see uh, a more uh, a larger scale uh, adoption of wind and solar PV. And uh, this of course is driven by the technological innovation, including power electronics as well. And uh, this uh, increase further uh, reduces the total cost, the levelized the cost of uh, renewable energy, then the, the renewable energy is uh, becoming much competitive compared to the traditional energies. That's also one of the reasons why we will see more renewable compared to the other uh, energy resources. But of course, this is also uh, a, a task uh, with uh, global efforts and global uh, policies uh, as I presented in previous slides. But in Anyway, and in the future, we will see much more uh, power electronics or electronics-based uh, uh, power systems. And uh, that was about the development of uh, our renewable energy uh, across the globe and uh, what is uh, uh, the, the major role of power electronics in such a, a energy utilization or conversion. Uh, but how uh, the power electronics was uh, developed. Uh, this uh, slide basically gives the, uh, the, 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 so the, the history of uh, power electronics as well as the development of power semiconductor uh, devices. And uh, back to the 1950s, 
Uh, so it, at, at, during that phase, uh, uh, people were uh, exploring uh, power switches or switches as nonlinear devices to control the energy or to convert to condition the energy. But uh, entering into the uh, late 1980s, then uh, the focus has been changed from the exploration of uh, uh, switching devices to the uh, circuit topologies, control modeling methods, and uh, we focus on the, the performance improvement of uh, such a uh, power conversion systems or energy conversion systems. And uh, when we entered into uh, the, the new century, then we see then the, 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 the focus has been shifted further shifted to improve the performance as well as the further reduction of the, the, the cost. Then uh, in, in terms of power electronics, we focus on the packaging the thermal management, the reliability issues, as well as the uh, digital tools uh, used in the design control and, uh, and the monitoring of uh, power converters. So in the past, uh, that was uh, about the explorations. Then we focused on the basic uh, functions of uh, power converters. And then today we focus on the further improvement of the performance of uh, power electronics because that's the major components in the energy conversion and the utilizations. And along with this development of power converters or power electronics, the power semiconductor in the past, uh, then we use these uh, mercury arc rectifiers and uh, then we have these uh, uncontrollable devices, power semiconductor devices, then uh, uh, full controllable uh, power devices. And today we have been uh, using uh, wide band gap devices that brings uh, higher uh, efficiency and higher reliability. But of course, this is also depends on the design and the control of the power converters. Even you are using uh, uh, wide band gap devices. So that was the brief history of the power electronics development seen from the global perspective and uh, back uh, to uh, ZJU, Zhejiang University, the power electronics has also been uh, developed fast in the past uh, 50 uh, years. And uh, actually, uh, in uh, 1972, uh, Professor Wang, the, academ uh, the academic of uh, uh, engineering, of Chinese engineering, uh, has established the first programs in power electronics. Since then, we have the power electronics programs in uh, uh, in uh, in uh, undergraduate programs and uh, uh, postgraduate programs and the PhD program as well. And uh, actually, uh, the power electronics, uh, the scopes of power electronics, uh, uh, we consider it was defined by uh, Dr. William E. Newell back to uh, 1973. And actually, the programs established in China was one year uh, before the, the definition of the scopes of power electronics. But anyway, uh, what we are talking about power electronics, that's a, a multidisciplinary uh, a subject uh, involving electronics, power, and uh, control. And uh, today we will discuss uh, how we use power converters to condition the energy, electrical energy, and uh, how we control uh, such energy. And uh, the research at uh, uh, Zhejiang University is quite uh, broad. Uh, we have uh, uh, research activities on power semiconductor itself, on power modules and power supplies, as well as the power converters in uh, different applications. Uh, for example, in data centers, uh, in the uh, transportation electrification, renewables, of course, and uh, other uh, infrastructures uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the country. And uh, then that was the development of uh, uh, power electronics uh, uh, seen from the global perspective and also the power electronics uh, uh, research and uh, teaching at uh, Zhejiang University. And then uh, we will walk through how, the, how we can use power converters to uh, condition uh, 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 wind and uh, 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 solar PV uh, systems. So in terms of wind power generation systems, this uh, slide basically shows the, the, the general uh, structure of wind uh, uh, conversion systems. It can be broadly uh, uh, 
categorized into three stages. The first one is the generation. Of course, uh, for wind turbine systems, we use uh, our wind generators. And then the, the, we have the conversion stage that based on the uh, power rate converters. And then the, uh, the grid side is, uh, is, of course, the grid. And uh, that's the load side still governed by synchronous uh, uh, generators. And uh, for power converters, uh, the standardized module or the most widely used power converters are two-level converters as well as the three-level converters. The uh, standardized modules they can they have been used in many uh, applications. Then uh, uh, for wind uh, uh, wind uh, uh, grid connected wind uh, uh, power conversion, there are mainly two concepts. The first one is based on this uh, double fan induction generation uh, concept. Uh, you can also call it as a parcel uh, parcel scale power uh, electronics wind systems because the wind, uh, wind power is partially processed by the power electronics converters. And uh, such, a, uh, such a concept is a, a state-of-the-art solution. And uh, uh, this has been used also uh, in many uh, commercial wind uh, uh, generation systems. And uh, the other concept is uh, called uh, uh, this uh, full-scale power electronics-based wind generation systems. You can use a, a synchronous generator or asynchronous generators. Uh, here, the power is fully processed by uh, power electronics. And uh, this concept is also uh, the state-of-the-art uh, solution and used in many uh, uh, commercial and uh, practical uh, projects. And uh, it is also increasingly used uh, uh, in in uh, in the wind generation systems because uh, it's it's capability to fully uh, process and uh, control the wind energy from the the, the turbine and this uh, this uh, concept can use gearbox or or remove gearbox uh, uh, depends on the on the on the applications and uh, for the power converters used in the two uh, concepts, uh, basically here, uh, so the two level power converter topologies, as I mentioned, this is a standard one, uh, standard uh, solution. For example, the two level uh, uh, voltage source converter back to back uh, solutions. This is a proven technology, standard power devices and modules can be used. Uh, and uh, the power electronics actually decoupled the, the uh, the power from the grid and the, the generator. But these two level solutions have some drawback, for example, high DV DT uh, two levels. Uh, you have two uh, levels of voltage output, then you, you need to use uh, uh, bulky filters to, to uh, make the output uh, uh, to be uh, sinusoidal. And the another thing is for this uh, uh, solution, you need energy storage element at the DC link. Uh, to sort of uh, uh, achieve the power decoupling between the generator and the grid side to sort of balance the, 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 the energy flow. And uh, another drawback for this solution is high power loss at high power uh, applications, lower efficiency. And uh, compared to this one, another uh, two-level uh, power converter topology is based on uh, diode rectifiers, you use diode rectifiers, then you have the boost stage to boost the voltage, then you have this uh, uh, two-level vo voltage source converter to connect to the, to the grid. Uh, this is a, a low-cost solution suitable for uh, permanent magnetic synchronous generators, generator, and uh, again, this uh, also has a standard device and a standard modules uh, to easily uh, assemble the entire systems. And uh, this uh, uh, topology has uh, some drawbacks, for example, low power quality on the generator side because uh, you, you are using diode rectifiers that's uh, uncontrollable devices, low frequency torque position uh, may be seen in the drivetrain. It is also challenging to design the boost converters if you have a, a higher power and uh, the device, uh, how to select the device to, to withstand such high power is a challenging uh, issue. And uh, that was for uh, more or less for low power applications uh, in wind. And uh, if you wanted to have um, uh, uh, solutions for uh, higher power uh, systems, then you can use either parallel the systems um, uh, using different modules 
And uh, the other way is you using a uh, multi-winding generator, then you have uh, each winding, you have each uh, a module to process the power, then the, the total power processed by the entire systems uh, can be much higher compared to a single module. So parallel uh, is, a, is a solution to, to handle high power in wind by systems. Then uh, another solution to handle higher power is to use multi-level converter topologies uh, for example, the three level MPC back-to-back uh, -back converters. This is the most commercialized multi-level converters. And because you have uh, uh, more uh, voltage levels compared to two levels, you can use uh, small filters to get the uh, uh, nice uh, output at the grid side. And this can do a uh, higher voltage and uh, uh, larger power. And uh, also it is possible to uh, extend the power capacitors by paralleling uh, more uh, power converters. But it also has some drawbacks. For example, unequal losses on the power devices need to, to do the uh, midpoint balancing uh, in, 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 the, in the operation. And uh, other solutions, for example, you, you can use a three level H bridge based uh, back to back converters and it achieves more equal loss distributions among the devices and among the modules. And it also has a redundancy. Uh, if one or two phases are filled, then you can, uh, the system can still uh, send the power or process power. And uh, it has higher uh, controllability coming from the zero sequence. And if you use, use these solutions, you have the possibility to, to uh, utilize the zero sequences uh, then uh, to achieve uh, more advanced control. Uh, but it also has some drawbacks. For example, you have to use open winding for generator and transformers. The cost is higher. And uh, another uh, challenge is uh, uh, that it is difficult uh, to, to extend its power uh, capability uh, because it is difficult to, to, uh, to connect in, in parallel. And uh, that was uh, uh, the solutions to, uh, to achieve uh, higher power uh, using either parallel solution or you use uh, multi-level technologies, uh, but the other solutions um, uh, can be the series connection. Uh, for example, as shown in this slide, you can uh, connect uh, the power modules uh, uh, or the uh, power conversion modules uh, in, ser uh, in series, then uh, each phase can pr process higher power, then the three phase systems can process uh, a higher power. So this is another way to, to increase the power processing capability of uh, wind uh, power converters. Of course, uh, the one of the series connections uh, you can see is the modular uh, multi-level converters. So you uh, use either you can use a half bridge solution or, or full bridge solutions to connect them in series uh, as 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 the 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 phase uh, the, the capability of of the phase can can process higher voltage and higher uh, power than the entire systems can handle uh, higher power. Uh, of course, uh, if you use uh, such wind device systems uh, for for practical applications, then uh, there are tens or, or even close to hundred wind devices in the entire wind park. So, how you connect such a uh, higher power uh, systems? Uh, basically, first you can use. Uh, uh, of course, it depends on the the solutions. So you can use DFIG. Uh, double effect induction generator uh, based solutions or you use this PMSG solutions. And if you have such a higher uh, uh, power, typically those uh, systems, wind parks are, uh, are off strong wind device systems, then you want to transfer this uh, off strong energy to on strong uh, systems, then you use this uh, uh, HVDC uh, technologies, uh, high voltage uh, uh, DC transmission systems to achieve the, the connection or to achieve the uh, electricity uh, trans, uh, uh, transmission. Yeah, that was about the uh, power converter technologies for uh, wind. And in terms of uh, uh, PV systems, uh, there are also uh, a couple of uh, uh, solutions or concepts uh, of grid connected PV systems, uh, depending on the uh, power level or voltage level. For example, for the modular 
uh, converter systems. Typically, this is a, a single phase solution, uh, a few or, or several hundred uh, uh, vats, and it is uh, for small uh, scale systems. And if you have a bit higher systems, you can either use uh, uh, DC technology. For example, you use DC DC converters, then you connected the uh, DC outputs uh, uh, to the common DC bus. Then you use a single uh, DC to AC converter to connect to the AC grid. And but this part is called a, a DC uh, grid. And this can be a single phase or three phase connection. And it is for small scale or commercial uh, systems. And for residential or, or, or commercial applications, uh, typically we use uh, either a string inverter or a multi string inverter, as shown uh, uh, on, on this slide. And then uh, this uh, the typical power rating for such system is several tens kilo 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 up to uh, several tens uh, kilowatt. And uh, for uh, further larger uh, scale uh, systems, commercial applications or grid applications, uh, uh, we use this central inverter uh, technology. And then you have a lot of panels uh, connected in uh, series and then in parallel to get higher power and high voltage. Then you use a single central inverter um, to connect to the to the grid. And the typical power rating for such systems is around the. Uh, uh, several uh, hundred uh, kilowatts. Yeah, and then uh, that was uh, the general concept for uh, grid connected PV systems and uh, in terms of power converters and for micro or small scale converters. Um, and we can use micro inverter or micro converter. Uh, for example, the DC optimizers based on conventional DC DC converter or based on this flyback uh, DC optimizers. And for micro inverter, that's a simple a single unit then directly connect uh, connect a converter a panel level voltage or power uh, to the uh, to the level uh, for the grid uh, connection. And then uh, for our string uh, converters, and the first one, of course, uh, we can use this um, uh, full bridge or each bridge uh, uh, PV inverter technology as shown here. Uh, here. It is also called transformerless uh, uh, PV inverter because we are not using a uh, transformer in this uh, uh, connection. Uh, but uh, such systems uh, have uh, some drawbacks when you remove the transformer. Uh, for example, you will see uh, leakage current uh, in the systems, then you have to address this issue and this root topology uh, in the regions or you modify the, the modulation uh, strategies. And uh, for this uh, uh, H-bridge based uh, transformer uh, inverters, the, the typical uh, power level is a few uh, or several kilowatts to several tens kilowatts. And uh, this is the standardized solution. Uh, you can easily scale it up uh, for higher power. Uh, but uh, the efficiency is, uh, is uh, uh, relatively low compared to other transformer uh, solutions. For example, like this H5 inverter, the efficiency uh, can be up to 98%. This uh, Henrik inverter systems, uh, the efficiency can be up to 97%. Actually, compared to the to the uh, previous uh, uh, H-bridge inverters, uh, those uh, uh, solutions uh, add uh, additional power devices like uh, S5 in the H5 inverter and the S5 and S6 uh, in the Henrik inverters, they achieve the isolation electronically means meaning that these will switch control those uh, switches to achieve the isolation between the DC and the grid side. And for uh, central uh, uh, inverters, uh, this slide basically gives the uh, 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 the general structure for centralized uh, central uh, inverter PV systems. And uh, actually for uh, central inverter systems, the PV plant, uh, there are more uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, central inverters used in a, a PV power plant. This is actually seen as a parallel solution uh, to handle uh, higher power. Uh, for example, for large PV plants, uh, for example, this uh, 700, uh, 750 kilowatts uh, by SMS, SMA, the rated uh, power is over tens and even hundreds uh, uh, megawatts 
use many central inverters uh, with power rating of up to uh, 900 kilowatt. Uh, but for this uh, central inverter solutions, typically the DC-DC converters are not used because it's difficult to uh, design. And uh, but in addition to the two level converters, we can also use uh, multi-level converters to uh, to achieve uh, higher power processing uh, in, in a, a PV plant. And uh, furthermore, for the central inverter te technology, you can use the uh, uh, series connection to handle high power. For example, on this slide, we saw, we saw this uh, solid state based, uh, solid state transformer based uh, uh, 1500 VDC uh, PV system. And uh, each module is uh, connected uh, uh, in series to uh, handle uh, the higher power. And it has a higher redundancy and a higher modularity, uh, but of course it significantly increases component counts and the potential degradation because you have a higher power uh, uh, exposed to the PV uh, modules, uh, then you may have this potential induced degradation and the topology may need to be uh, redesigned to accommodate this higher uh, DC voltage. Yeah, that was about the uh, uh, the power electronics converters for wind and solar PV. And in terms of control, uh, we have to uh, achieve different uh, goals at different stages. For example, at the generation side, we need to optimize the power uh, because the energy uh, production is relying on the uh, ambient conditions. So for example, for wind, that the wind speed and for uh, PV, that depends on the uh, solar irradiance level. So we have to optimize the power to extract as much energy from the generator side. And the uh, conversion side, then uh, we have to uh, achieve a reliable and secure the power supply and the efficiency cost the volume are of concern. And uh, the other thing is we also have to uh, contribute to the, uh, to the, to the grid by uh, regulate the active and reactive power according to the grid demand. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, fault handling, then uh, the entire systems or the power converter has to ride through uh, faults if there are temporary faults at the grid side. And another thing is that it is more uh, and more uh, required in, in, in today's uh, power electronics based system, it's a communication. Then through the communication, we can coordinate uh, uh, different units or, or plans then to achieve uh, more uh, uh, power optimization or, or energy flow in the system. And then uh, uh, in the past, uh, uh, the general control of uh, power converters is called uh, a grid following, which means then uh, the power generation unit is feeding power to the grid. And uh, we assume that the grid is a stable voltage source, uh, has a constant voltage amplitude and a constant frequency. But this is changing because we are putting more and more power electronics converters. That's static converter systems compared to the uh, to the uh, rotating machine based generation systems. Then uh, the control is shifting from a glow, uh, grid forming to the grid forming mode, which means the power generation system based on uh, renewables is becoming much more active in the power grid. So compared to the grid following. Uh, uh, control, the grid forming uh, control is uh, such a control that we make our uh, renewable generation systems to be active uh, uh, power sources. It can provide uh, a, a stable voltage reference to the, to the loads, which means uh, it can act as a constant voltage amplitude, a constant frequency uh, source uh, seen by other, other, other uh, 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 loads. Then uh, there are a couple of uh, grid forming control. For example, the droop control, the virtual synchronous generator control, the uh, virtual uh, oscillation control or power synchronization control. But in conclusion, the grid forming control is a way to make the power converters uh, have or, or emulate synchronous generators. Then we can use the, the knowledge we gained in, in the past years to design the entire system or to operate the entire system. So in terms of uh, uh, virtual energy storage control, 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, grid connected PV control, uh, we have developed this uh, virtual energy storage control in PV systems. This is a way uh, to, to contribute uh, uh, the grid stability and by regulate its uh, active power to according to the frequency deviations. And uh, also we can, uh, we can contribute to the uh, frequency change rate that is related to the inertia and the damping. So the basic concept is uh, we regulate the PV system power operated at this uh, such a line, then this part, this reserve energy can be released uh, in order to support the frequency. And if you need uh, uh, more energy or if it, there is an over frequency issue, then we can further reduce the power from the uh, PV panels. Then this is uh, uh, the, 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 the operation of storing energy. So it looks like uh, a, a physical uh, energy storage or a physical batteries. Uh, that's what we call it a uh, uh, virtual energy uh, storage control, but there's no physical energy storage devices. Then we have done a, 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 a simulation of a PV systems. The power rating is 20 kilowatts. Then in response to a frequency drop, then how uh, we can use this reserved energy to improve the, uh, the fre frequency profile of the grid. And then uh, uh, for uh, multi-level converter topologies, uh, we uh, give it an example, this multi-level DAB uh, converters. Uh, this is, uh, 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 we, we see some applications uh, in media voltage DC systems because when we use this uh, multi-level uh, dual active bridge converters, we can improve uh, the efficiency, the reliability, and uh, we can also achieve isolation or softer switching uh, in such systems. Uh, that's why uh, this is uh, increasingly used in uh, media voltage DC system as so in, in this uh, uh, figure. We have PV panels, we have storage, and also uh, auxiliary uh, power supplies connected to the entire system. And for uh, these multi-level DAB converters, uh, we have uh, to balance the capacitor voltage uh, because as, as I mentioned, then uh, this can have uh, some issues. Uh, the voltage unbalance uh, for the, on the capacitor, then it will increase the losses and uh, uh, brings additional uh, side effects. Then we have to uh, balance the voltage, and what we have done is uh, using a, a complementary uh, switching state to compensate the uh, unbalance in order to uh, to achieve uh, equal voltage across the two two capacitors. And so, in, in this uh, uh, in experimental test results, and uh, uh, furthermore, we give an example. For so this uh, uh, impedance source converters, and uh, why we have this impedance source converters? Because for applications like uh, 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 micro inverters, and we have to connect the low voltage PV panels to the high voltage grid. The PV panels typical voltage level is uh, around uh, uh, several uh, tens of watts, uh, but for the for the grid side, that's uh, uh, a few uh, one hundred eleven. Um, volts or, or, or 220 uh, volts. So this is, uh, it requires a, a, a very high boosting from the PV panel to the grid, uh, grid side. If you use traditional two-stage conversion systems, the efficiency is usually low. Uh, what you can do is to use this uh, uh, impedance source networks. It's passive based. Then uh, you can achieve higher uh, boosting from the, from the PV panels. Then uh, you can connected to the to the grid. And, but for such a system, we also have some issues to address. For example, the uh, current ripples, if you minimize the ripples, you can use uh, smaller inductors and uh, this can uh, improve the uh, switching and uh, improve the efficiency. And uh, there are a couple of solutions to achieve so, like increasing the uh, switching frequency or using coupled inductors, but through the control, actually we can achieve this target. We modify the modulation and by utilizing the additional suit through states for the uh, impedance source based converters, then we achieve the uh, uh, ripple current reduction. And uh, in terms of modulation to improve the performance of power converters, I further give an example, which is published on E-Prime. And uh, 
this energy efficiency enhancement in full bridge PV inverters with advanced uh, modulations. We demonstrated this uh, uh, modulate different modulation strategies on uh, uh, full bridge converters and uh, that transformers transformers operations we uh, use we compare the different modulation strategies uh, uh, in terms of how they can achieve the uh, power loss uh, minimization or reduction. And uh, here are uh, shows some uh, uh, examples uh, simulation results. Then we if we have uh, different modulation strategies, how the uh, losses will be distributed among the uh, power devices. For example, if you use bipolar modulation strategies and if you use hybrid uh, hybrid unipolar uh, modulation strategies and the some of the power losses can be reduced and the total losses can be reduced, meaning that the power distribution among the devices can be reduced. Uh, so if you are interested, you can you can refer to this uh, this paper for more details and uh, yeah. And furthermore, uh, as we are connecting small uh, intermittent uh, renewable to the grid, and the grid is uh, really uh, challenged because you have the fluctuating power uh, from the wind turbines from the PV panels, then this creating some challenge issues to the grid. And if we uh, to to address this issue, and uh, we see more and more uh, our energy storage in the in the systems. So for energy storage systems, it can be standalone, or the energy storage systems can be integrated uh, with uh, with other uh, re renewable resources. Here we saw an uh, integration of uh, PV and uh, uh, battery uh, systems. We use this. Uh, uh, cascaded uh, H-bridge technologies that, uh, to achieve this, uh, this solution. And then uh, for such systems, we have also to uh, achieve the, the control. The control is becoming much more uh, complex because you have to uh, manage the, the power flow between different converters in order to achieve the, the control targets. And here uh, we, 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 we demonstrate then uh, how we use uh, a cascaded uh, H-bridge-based uh, PV battery systems to achieve uh, active power regulation and then further to achieve um, the frequency regulations in PV systems. Yes, that was basically all the technical uh, content I want to uh, present uh, in summary and uh, we see uh, much more uh, power electronics uh, in the power grid, and uh, it couples uh, different uh, uh, energy vectors. And we see we will see this even further in the in the in the future. And this is of course driven by the uh, reduction of the cost of renewable technologies. But the other thing is uh, also we want to have secure and reliable power supplies. For example, this energy island uh, with the power to X technologies in Denmark, then we have different uh, energy vectors or different uh, uh, energy sources in the entire energy systems. And another thing is we see that the digitalization and the intelligence is uh, uh, of significant uh, in importance in today's energy systems, and this brings uh, opportunities. Uh, for example, uh, how we achieve the monitoring and the diagnosis of the energy systems. Uh, but of course, it also creates uh, challenges, for example, cybersecurity issues uh, in the entire uh, digitalized uh, systems. This uh, need more efforts to, to address. Uh, we have to develop advanced power converters, but of course, uh, uh, advanced control. So topologies and the control uh, are important to, to address those issues. Yes, uh, with that, uh, I would thank you all for your kind attention. And uh, I, I just wanted to brief, uh, uh, bring up another uh, point is that we are operating, uh, uh, we, we are organizing a special issue on power qualities in modern electrical grids on E prime. So if you are interested, uh, you can also uh, submit papers uh, there. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. This is um, uh, thanks a lot to my mentor, uh, Professor Fred Blobia, and my uh, former students and colleagues, and my students at the Zhejiang University and the lab I'm running, Pencil. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Professor, for uh, such interesting presentation.
now i would like to uh, invite participant to ask question so from participants uh, we have one questions uh, on so uh, from sia so he is he or she is asking uh, could you give us some comments how new devices impact the different power electronics topologies you introduced will some of them become more popular in the future or disappear from the industry with the coming of the wvz devices please yeah uh, yeah thanks thanks a lot kosin um uh, thanks a lot for the question as well and uh, i would say that we will we will um uh, you can expect a much more uh uh, wide band gap devices uh, in the industry and also in the practical applications because this is uh, moving fast. Of course, uh, it depends on the cost of these wide band gap devices. And if you have a massive production of uh, wide band gap devices, of course, the cost is uh, uh, reduced. Then we will see further larger scale uh, adoption of uh, wide band gap devices. And uh, in terms of the use of wide band gap devices, it brings uh, uh, some advantages. For example, it can operate in more higher uh, power, uh, uh, more higher uh, temperature or temperature conditions, and uh, with higher switching frequencies, then you can really uh, squeeze your, your power converters. I mean, the volume is really small, then it, it, it will bring easy installations benefits, then the cost can further be reduced. When the cost of further be reduced, you will have more uh, productions than the cost of food further re reduced. And uh, I, I would say that we will have uh, more uh, wide band gap devices uh, used in the in the in the uh, industry in industry and in our practical applications. But of course, uh, there's always a double edged sword. And if you have very high frequencies, we may face like uh, EMI EMC issues. In the in the, in the power converters and the, also the design of the uh, magnetics, the passives. For example, if you you are switching your power devices uh, at the megahertz or a, a few hundred megahertz, then uh, the 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 design of the magnetics can be a challenge issue. I, I hope I have under uh, I have uh, answered the questions uh, properly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is. Um... What do you think about the new research in the field of solar PV converters? Yeah, um, I, I would say that uh, uh, in, in the application of uh, solar PV, uh, the research of power converter technologies, um, uh, basically it divided into two areas. Uh, the one, the first one is the, the for low power applications. For example, uh, for the building integrated uh, uh, PV systems, because you have a multi uh, facets building, then you put panels in different uh, uh, different areas of the building. Then you have to handle uh, the 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 parcel uh, the 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 parcel seating issues uh, in such applications. Then the power converter design for that specific uh, applications uh, uh, is a challenge issues. And uh, there are quite a lot of research in these areas. And another example is for. Uh, for for these low power applications uh, is for example the uh, the the solar powered uh, uh, cars electrical vehicles the the uh, bags you using using uh, using uh, solar PV panels then uh, this power electronics converter design has to handle uh, regular uh, unequal how uh, uh, solar irradiance conditions. So this is uh, something uh, you have to do. And for high power applications, uh, then uh, how you can uh, uh, scale up the, the power uh, uh, level. Uh, for example, you use uh, uh, three level converters or you use different uh, other modular converter uh, technologies to achieve high power applications. Uh, this is another uh, area. I think this is currently they are divided into the two areas and in between, this and it is more uh, standardized and it is more uh, merged uh, technology. Okay, thank you, Yang, Professor Yang. And dear part participants, you have any question further? I, ha I had a question. 
So, uh, thanks so much, um, Professor Yang, for such a such a great um, presentation. I wanted to. I just wanted to ask about. You mentioned that that in that area there's a lot of research in PV converters. Where else do you see quite a lot of research happening in this this area right now, or do you foresee more research happening? Uh, in PV? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned PV, uh, that there's a lot of research happening in that area. Did I get that right? Uh, I wondered where else you saw. Um, where, where you thought there might be big focuses for PERC going forward? Yeah, uh, in, in, in PV systems, the other thing is uh, uh, how we can uh, uh, develop this uh, uh, high efficiency uh, solar cells because uh, that's one of the, uh, the most important things because we mm -hmm. uh, sort of capture the solar energy through the uh, solar, uh, solar cells. And there are quite uh, a lot of research on this, uh, what is called, uh, 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 I, I can't recall the name, it, 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 another technology, but not, not based on silicon technologies, the, the, another technology is using different materials to, 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 uh, uh, to fabric uh, the solar cells. And there are quite a lot of research in that area to improve the uh, efficiency of solar cells to improve the stability of solar cells. And this is one they have they are doing. Uh, but the other thing is uh, for, I think this is something we have to consider is the, the, the uh, reuse of the solar panels. Because uh, as I presented in this, uh, in this uh, uh, slide and the PV systems um, uh, has been increased in the past uh, uh, 20 years or 10 years. And we see then the, the lifetime for a PV plant or a PV panel is around 20 to 25 years. So from uh, uh, 2025, we will see a lot of uh, uh, PV systems will be retired. So if we see such a big uh, uh, retirement of, of PV plants or PV panels, how we could reuse uh, such PV panels or, or we just uh, threw them away, then we will have a, a huge waste of uh, uh, solar uh, PV panels. And uh, there are also some research uh, on the reuse of PV panels. I think in EU, uh, in, the, in the States as well, uh, different technologies. Of course, the metal frames we can use, easily reuse, but what about the silicon? Cells, then how we can reuse them, and uh, this is maybe something uh, we will see in the future. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you. I think we have one more question. Um, so, um, Karen, uh, thanks for your impressive presentation. For traditional topologies and control strategies, could you please comment the opportunities and challenges? challenges of archiving the balance between power density and reliability in electric vehicles. I think that's going to have to be our last question because of time. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the for the question. Uh, of course, for uh, traditional topologies, uh, they are standardized, they are um, modular, uh, mo they have high modularity. So that's why the traditional topologies are, are used in, in renewables uh, as well as in uh, electrical vehicles. Uh, but if you wanted to achieve the balance between the uh, power density and the reliability, what you could do is to uh, sort of uh, have a better uh, thermal uh, management systems uh, in, in the power converters and uh, uh, of course, this is a farm team from the hardware design. And if you have a, 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 a good thermal management systems, then you sort of uh, have a, a, a fast uh, heat dissipations, then uh, you, you can sort of uh, reduce, the, uh, have a higher power density and the reliability can be improved. So there is a balance between the, the, the design, of course. And this is seen from the hardware perspective. The other thing is uh, you can also achieve this through the control, but of course this is also to manage the manage the thermal flow uh, in the, in the, in the systems. Uh, then uh, you control the, the the temperature in the systems to to sort of achieve the uh, a balance between the power density and the reliability. Of course, this is uh, one of the solutions. The other way is you use uh, uh, 
uh, these uh, advanced uh, devices like uh, uh, silicon carbide devices and the wide band gap devices, you have a higher switching frequency, then uh, you sort of have a higher power density and the reliability can also be improved because such devices uh, uh, usually have, they are claimed have uh, having a higher uh, reliability compared to the silicon based devices. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Anyone? Thank you. Uh, any further question? I think we need oh. to, to wrap up because of the time. Yeah, yeah. we have time. Is... Do, um, yeah, do, do reach out. There's uh, Professor Yang's um, email address there. Is if you, if you would like, I hope that's okay if people contact you direct. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, that's no problem. So if they have uh, further questions, and uh, we can we can discuss it through the email. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for 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 today for this evening, um, your evening, and, and taking the time to, to to present this and prepare it for us. It's been really great and very much appreciated. So, so the slides will be shared um, um, after the presentation with all, everyone who's attended. And um, yes, thank thank you so much again. Um, we'd like to invite your submissions to the journal as well. If, if um, you do go to ePrime and have a look at those articles. But thank you everyone for joining us today and do look out for the next webinar in the series. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.